Let's start the meeting and go now live to India. Dr. Shiva Kumar uh, has live cases. Good morning, Ziad. Are you able to hear me? Shiva Kumar, good morning. Good morning. Are you able to see me and hear us? We see you and we hear you very clear. And first of all, thank you for making the long journey from Mashhad to Dubai back to Chennai. Uh, yesterday morning. I know that uh, it was very difficult for you guys after they closed the airspace, but now you are in front of us. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Ziad. I would like to thank uh, Ziad, Ahmed, uh, Damian, and the entire team of FIX for giving us this opportunity to uh, be participating in this wonderful meeting. Uh, we have uh, two patients scheduled. In the first uh, schedule, we have a pulmonary valve implantation. With me, I have Dr. Pramod Sagar and Dr. Tejasvi, who are my colleagues for the last few years, and uh, um, uh, Sister Christy, who is our uh, uh, scrub nurse. And I have Dr. Uday Kumar, uh, who is our uh, intensivist, who is managing the patient on general anesthesia. I would like to request Dr. Vandana, who is my colleague, to uh, uh, move the slides so that Dr. Pramod will introduce the case. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope the slides are visible. Our patient is a 24-year-old gentleman. He is a, he is a case of tetralogy of fallow with pulmonary stenosis, which was diagnosed at uh, around two months of age. At nine months of age, he underwent a right modified BT shunt, which was in 2001. Then after two years, he underwent a complete surgical correction with a transalar patch in 2003. He was asymptomatic, and for the last six months, he has developed class 2 dyspnea. His weight is 68, and clinically, he was having a to and fro murmur at the pulmonary area. Echocardiography showed free PR. There was flow turbulence with the, at the RVOT and the peak gradient was 28 millimeter mercury. The branch PAs were large. There was significant RA and RV dilatation with mild RV dysfunction. Next, please. The chest X-ray, you can see here, there is significant cardiomegaly. CTR is almost 65 percent. There is, uh, otherwise, there is no major issues. We can see some sternal weights we will be using for as a landmark during the procedure. Next. We can also see that ECG also shows broad QRS with a QRS duration of almost 180, which is also an indication for a pulmonary valve implantation in this case. Next. We can see the CT here. The CT, if you see, it is actually a hourglass shaped uh, RVOT. We can see the proximal and the distal RVOT, uh, distal MPA is quite large. And in the mid MPA, there is a fold of tissue, which is likely the previous valve tissue that is there. And uh, the measurement in the narrower segment is around 24 into 31. Whereas the proximal and distal dimensions are quite large, you can see almost it's uh, 38 and 45, which are quite large for any kind of valve. The RCA was safe; it was anterior, as we can see here. The LAD was in, in relation to distal MPA, which was roomy, so we don't anticipate a major problem with the LAD. However, we'll do an interrogation during the procedure. This is a platform called Vimasa, which we have been using from uh, last two years. We have to thank the, uh, this uh, software from, from Proland. This we can see, in this we can, we can actually go and slice, we can get a 3D model, we can slice it, we can see over here, we can see the dilated branch PS, we can see that the tissue infolding over there, and that is the narrowest portion where we have to land the valve, and the proximal and distal is quite, uh, RVOT is quite large, and that is the LAD as we can see here. Can you go to next slide? This is the segmented model, we have only segmented the RVOT with the LAD, for our evaluation. Here we can see that the waist is quite, it is almost circumferential and also we can see the LAD here which is actually at the, in the relationship of posterior wall of RVOT. To simulate the procedure, we were, uh, if we take a valve, we are planning to take a my valve, I will uh, tell about it later. This is a valve which uh, we are planning actually to get a, something like a diameter of around 33.5 which is actually 32 valve with additional contrast. Now if you take a 33.5 valve and uh, Two centimeter, which is actually around two centimeter length in the full deployed position. If you go and place it in the exactly in that position and see how the opposition is, it looks like uh, the opposition was good. Here we can see here the uh, all round. If we rotate and see, the opposition was nearly good and it was uh, there was it was looking adequate and also the coronary was looking safer. It was distal to the valve. Next slide, please. This is an image again which shows the same and in, a, in the third image on the right side you can see that the coronary is actually safe when the valve is fully deployed. It. deployed. Next slide please. We can also de derive the angiographic views which can actually 
sh show the RVOT well. In this actually we can see this is the only view that is the LAO 30 with cranial 55 which was actually giving a good picture but that is not feasible in the lab to perform. So we will be using whichever is more closer to this image and we can uh, uh, that we will show in subsequent uh, angiograms. This is actually just uh, a few slides on the my valve which is, uh, for those who do not know about this, this is an Indian made valve. This is a nickel cobalt which is uh, actually initially made for the aortic valve but now we have been using in uh, pulmonary valve for more than 5 years now and uh, almost uh, more than 100 patients in India have, been, have undergone pulmonary valve using this uh, my valve. Next slide please. It is available from uh, uh, 19 to 32 millimeter and this 30.5 and 32 are called XL which are quite large sizes and uh, recently a 35 is also under evaluation. Uh, uh, the system that is used for delivery is called a navigator system uh, which, which is mainly derived for an aortic valve but also it will be helpful in the pulmonary valve position. Next please. There is a dedicated sheath called a python sheath which is actually a 14 French sheath which is universal for all the size of the valves. The good thing is it is called python because it can bulge and uh, it, it can expand and it, it has an expansive character. It can, when the valve is being pushed it will bulge and then actually come back to its original dimension when we pass the valve. So that is what we will be probably using and python XL is one of the sheath that is a longer sheath that can be placed up to the branch PS so that we can spare the tricuspid valve which is being available now. This is the uh, case and we will be planning to use the pulmonary valve using uh, Merrill valve today. Thank you. Thank you, Pramod. I think uh, it was a it was a uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, Zia, this is uh, as uh, Dr. Pramod was telling, a significantly dilated right ventricular outflow tract, and the landing zone was only a fold of tissue that was coming out from the outer surface of the right ventricular outflow tract. Uh, the distal main pulmonary artery was close to four four centimeters, and the ventriculopulmonary junction with the transandular patch area was also almost 39 millimeter. Uh, the, the fold of tissue is what we are trying to capitalize on. So uh, what we Shiva Kumar. Yes. Shiva Kumar. Yep. We have some questions before you start. So yep. my first question to you, I, I, I don't know if I missed it or not. Have you done an MRI for volumes and all of this? No. Because no, I have the, not seen it in the school. Yeah. See, so yeah, this patient is coming from Sri Lanka. Uh, the uh, the patient has very significantly dilated right ventricle on the CT scan and on the echocardiography. Okay. We could not do a cardiac MRI because cardiac MRI facilities are not available in um, uh, Sri Lanka. And the patient arrived yesterday morning into our unit and we did not have time because there was also some uncertainty about how I am going to reach back from Iran back sure, to Sure, sure. Uh, that's that's okay. I understand. I mean, we all agree that he has significantly dilated right ventricle, and I'm sure if you uh, have done the MRI, it will. But I actually, from scientific and academic point of view, uh, it's important that when you do these cases, because these are high stake cases, any complications, anything like that, if you are not working with guidelines, uh, you could you could uh, have a problem. Let me ask the panelists here quickly before you proceed: uh, choice between self-expandable versus balloon expandable valves. Uh, Zuhair, any any comments on this uh, patient uh, from surgical point of view? Well, the, only, the only thing from surgical point of view is the fact that the distal pulmonary arteries are very dilated, almost aneurysmal. Uh, so I just wonder if uh, percutaneous uh, valve, uh, what will do for those uh, pulmonary oh, arteries, right. which I think at one stage they'll probably need some sort of intervention because I believe that they'll probably continue to dilate and I think they need it to be dealt with. So. Personally, such a patient, I would have recommended surgery as a as the treatment of choice rather than a percutaneous balloon. Good perspective. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Regina and Erkan and uh... um, I think this patient has a large RVOT, self-expandable uh, uh, valve also will be a good option for this particular case. Maybe my, my valve has a special uh, big valve. Um, uh, we don't have good experience with my valve. We'll listen to our colleagues here and see what he will do with uh, good luck, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, to, to me, it's uh, the same as my neighbors just stated. Um, yeah, we would have explored this for a self-expanding valve in our team. Yeah. 
I agree, uh, Dr. Zia, the, the, I, and the, the entire uh, panel of moderators, this probably this anatomy is suitable for yeah, Venus P36 by uh, 25 valve, or it is also suitable possibly for a harmony. Uh, both these valves, Venus P as well as Harmony, both are available in India on import license, which means we have to get a special uh, permission from the Indian government, whereas my valve is available on shelf. And uh, since my valve has got an option of 32 millimeter uh, diameter, and uh, when we inflate 5 ml extra, this 32 will almost reach 33 millimeter. So we are planning to use a balloon expandable, but I completely agree with the panelists that it is also a case for a self-expanding valve. Uh, uh, Shiva Kumar, yes. one question from the audience here from the floor, Alejandro. Hi Shiva, this is Alejandro from Argentina. Hi. Um, great case as always. Uh, uh, in this case that you are uh, thinking about implanting a my valve, uh, have you consider creating a landing zone with a, with a stent, with a previous stent to, to make that reventricular alpha track uh, more predictable? Exactly. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very good point, Ale Alejandro. Uh, whenever we have a, a huge RVOT and uh, an, a non-obstructed RVOT, it is always a good idea to have a pre-stent, but the diameters that we are talking about is a little more than 30 millimeter. And uh, technically, we don't have large stents that go up to 32 millimeters in, in our place. Uh, we, the, the options that are available are 10 zig CP stent that can be done or Andra XXL that, that can be done. And these are not available in our place in smaller lengths. They are very, very long and they will be protruding for long distances. So we are planning to go for a direct implantation. I will show you with the angiogram how we selected our, uh, our uh, uh, landing zone. Can we go ahead, Shiva Kumar. Yeah, first picture. So what we started off with is a LV angiogram just to exclude any residual ventricular septal defects, even though echocardiogram did not show. There was a previous echocardiogram done few years before, which we are mentioning about a small residual ventricular septal defects. We just wanted to ensure that. Next one, we the axis that we took was right femoral vein, left femoral vein, two catheters, and uh, left femoral artery. Through the left femoral uh, vein, one of the catheter is used for pacing the right ventricle, and one of them is for giving the control angiography in the right ventricular outflow tract. Through the right, ven right femoral venous catheter, we have advanced a Lundquist wire, parked it deep in the right lower lobe pulmonary artery branch. And this is a marker pigtail that runs on the Lundquist, and parallel pigtail catheter is making the injection. You would have seen that uh, Dr. Pramod also mentioned during the virtual reality reconstructions that this uh, uh, RVOT was getting profiled only better on a shallow left anterior oblique cranial projection. However, we started still with a RAO angiogram. This was the RAO angiogram. In this RAO angiogram, we can see that the, the narrowest point uh, was getting uh, uh, like uh, hidden between the aneurysmal part. Uh, second picture. I'll show you all the pictures. Okay, freeze it now. So here, if we, if we have a look at it, go back, you can, we can see that the lower waist is the ventriculopulmonary junction which was very, very large. Then there is an aneurysmal one transandular patch that is on the leftward side of the RVOT. Just above that is the second narrowing which is the fold of tissue that we are, ca we are planning to use as the landing zone. Can you now run this angiogram again? So if, if you look at it, the, the superior, uh, the indentation is what is going to be our landing zone. As was pointed out by the surgeon, the branch pulmonary arteries are quite good. The distal main pulmonary artery just beyond the point of the waist is also very roomy. As well, the proximal transandular patch region is also very roomy. So we need to be very precise in our placement as we are expanding the valve. Next picture. We also tried a lateral view. However, the lateral view was also, it was getting overlapped. So we finally, we decided that the shallow LAO cranial will be our, uh, 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 the prime angiogram. Can you show the fixed photos of the measurements? Uh, we, will, we will now show you the measurements now uh, that we have done in all these three views. Show the, show the recorded, okay. So uh, this is the uh, this is in the AP cranial uh, the sort of shallow LAO cranial projection where we are getting almost three centimeters on the the region of the waist and show the other photos as well. 
Okay, so this is in the same projection when we are seeing the distal main pulmonary artery pre bifurcation. It was almost around 36 millimeters, and the level of the transandular patch, the bulging transandular patch, it's around 35, and the ventriculopulmonary junction was around 37. So what what we are planning to use as the landing zone is between the first line and the second line. The next picture. The the other measurements. Okay, so so the, uh, actually primarily we are we are now going to use this as the landmark. We we then subsequently show the next angiogram. So we did a balloon testing, balloon interrogation of the uh, right ventricular outflow tract using a 30 millimeter semi-compliant ZMED balloon. Can you run the picture? Next picture. Next. So this is a this is a ZMED balloon, uh, which is uh, uh, 30 millimeter in diameter. Uh, the, 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 despite uh, RV pacing, the balloon was slightly getting milked into the right ventricular outflow tract. So, uh, this was much more distal than what we, uh, what we anticipated. Next picture. So, at this place, when we made an angiogram, we realized that it is uh, the, the proximal part of the balloon is actually at the level of waist and uh, at the level of landing zone, and there is still a small amount of residual flow. So the next picture, we slightly pulled it out, and this is now we are able to clearly see the waste. This is a 30 millimeter uh, ZMED balloon, which almost has fully inflated. We are able to get a complete occlusion. So the sternal wire below the second sternal wire and above the third sternal wire is going to be our potential landing zone. So uh, once we have got a complete occlusion on a 30 millimeter balloon, we started preparing for a 32 millimeter valve. At the same time, we also prepared ourselves for a coronary interrogation. Next picture. So this is this is the uh, this is another check of a 30 millimeter uh, 30 millimeter ZMED balloon. Here we we reduced the pacing to in order to find out whether uh, without pacing the balloon is popping out too much. We found that uh, the balloon is reasonably stable there. Next picture. So this is a uh, a balloon interrogation. Uh, the, the coronary catheter has gone deep into the left anterior descending coronary artery. Uh, we can appreciate that when we are having a full inflation, there is not much of narrowing of the left main or LAD. The left circumflex is flowing uh, poorly because the catheter has gone deeper into the LAD uh, during this particular angiogram. So uh, currently, what we have done is we are we are live with the hemodynamics. We want to show the show the hemodynamics big. I want to show you one PA pressure and RV pressure. So this is now uh, catheter in the pulmonary artery. Uh, this is recording a pressure of around 30 millimeters systolic uh, with an aortic pressure of almost 95 millimeters. The patient is on general anesthesia. I'm now pulling back the uh, right coronary guide catheter, which is over the Lundquist wire. Uh, now this has come up to the pulmonary, uh, main pulmonary artery. The pressure is more or less the same at around 30. Now I am coming down. This has now reached the right ventricle. This is about 30, maybe 32 to 33. I'm coming down further. This is below the ventriculopulmonary junction. So this is around 35 millimeters of mercury. And now we are at the right ventricular inflow region. Uh, hi, Siva. This is Ahmed. Yeah. Hi, Ahmed. Uh, yeah, good case. Congratulations. Uh, I would like to uh, comment about the um, sizing, yeah. Uh, I don't do uh, se with semi-compliant balloon, balloon interrogation before uh, sizing balloon because it may cause a little bit enlargement in the area because of the pressure. But com with compliant balloon, you don't see it. Maybe uh, the waste may occur less than... Uh, for example, 28 millimeter, then uh, you may put uh, lesser sizes of the uh, valve, maybe directly, maybe after breast standing. Uh, another issue, the coronary compression test. We have given up coronary compression test in Native Adwood for a long time, after 50 cases. We have done more than 250 cases of uh, uh, coronary compression test in Native Adwood. We haven't seen any. We haven't seen any, so we gave up. Uh, another issue that in this particular patient, uh, are you gonna to put a stand or without stand? In last five uh, patients, we have done 
uh, especially relying on the city and geography. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, we cannot rely on the uh, on the on geographic imaging uh, measurements. Uh, I do believe uh, city and geography more than uh, conventional and geography. What do you think about it? I agree, Ahmed. I also trust more on the measurements on CT, less on the angiographic measurements. And uh, about pre-stenting, I mentioned about the problem of not having an, uh, an adequate sized large stent to almost go to 30 millimeters. Uh, and uh, so uh, we are directly going to be planning a, a, a pulmonary valve. The, 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 since we are, we, uh, about, about your uh, sizing balloon, Amplatzer sizing balloon, which is a very compliant balloon versus ZMED balloon, which is a semi-compliant balloon. I trust uh, ZMED balloon very often in almost all the native RVOTs because that definitely tells me that uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, right ventricular outflow tract is completely occluded with a 30 millimeter balloon and that gives me a reassurance to use a 32 millimeter valve with 5 ml extra, which makes it around 33 to 33.5 millimeters. So that gives me enormous confidence that the valve will be fixing at the, uh, uh, the landing zone properly without any significant paravalver leak or, I mean, a lack of uh, adequate uh, contact of the valve with the outflow tract. So all the cases I use a Z-Med uh, uh, balloon. Uh, and uh, pre-stenting uh, is done only in patients who are less than 28. Uh, if it is more than 28, uh, we, we don't pre-stent. We directly go for the valve. Uh, so I, 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 uh, the, in this patient, what we are planning to do is uh, exactly identify the same landing zone and uh, try to uh, deploy the valve. Now, this is the navigator system with a 32 millimeter valve that has been loaded. And uh, can you come concentrate? So. So this is the small loading sheath. This loading sheath has got the valve inside. The valve is uh, positioned in such a way that the proximal skirt, what I'm, what I'm touching here is the proximal skirt. The proximal skirt is the, uh, the polyurethane cuff around the valve. And the distal part, which is going to be on the main pulmonary artery, is the bare portion. So in the valve, we will have almost 50% of the valve will have a covered segment. And the distal 50 millimeter will be a bare segment. So this goes through, uh, this navigator system goes through a 14 French expandable Python sheath and the Python sheath slowly expands to allow the valve to go inside. We pre-dilate the Python sheath with a 18 French dilator so that the, the dilator sure. is, yes. Do you, do you have dry cyst sheet? No, we don't or have dry. We have. Yeah, are you, I, are you going to direct, yeah, like what? Tavia? Yeah? No, no, we are using the same Python sheet. You see the, uh, yes. this is the Python sheet. Yeah, it is not long sheet, you know. The... Yeah, it's not a long sheet. We, uh, actually, Dr. Pramod was mentioning, we have another option of a Python Excel sheet, which is a long sheet, which, is, which goes up to the right ventricular outflow tract. However, that sheet has uh, 26 French. So we want to try it on a conventional 14 French sheet itself. So uh, I don't the... use dry C sheet as well, yeah? We... yeah? I haven't seen any significant problem during the tracking of the valve, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah, we don't have an, yeah. dry no, seal is not available in our country. It's not uh, registered in our country. So now we what are we are... In our country as well. Yeah. Carry on, please. So now the, the sheath goes in, uh, the, the delivery sleeve. Now we are advancing the valve. The valve now... Do you need pacing? Yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I, I'm keeping, keeping I, a I don't, Yeah, you are going to do pacing, yeah? Yeah. I don't think it is needed in RVOT here. Yeah, in my correct. So now, so now what I'm going to do is, we are trying to, uh, we'll check the wire position once again, show the right, uh, okay, wire position is more or less stable. Come back. Okay, so now. Can we see the lateral projection as well? Uh, we, we have, it's a, it's a single plane lab. So if uh, I will, uh, I will, I will choose a lateral plane when I need it. Currently, I'm advancing through the tricuspid valve. Can we see the right anterior oblique projection here? 
will show it. Uh, Ahmed, just yeah, see what uh, fluoro store this and then show me. Fluoro store this. Yeah. Do we need the coronary coronary catheter at the aorta? The coronary catheter is just sitting in the ascending aorta. We yes, will be sir. using it mm. at the time when we need it. Uh, so currently now we have advanced the. Uh, I'm I'm loosening the track. I will advance the. Show me the guide wire position. It's okay. So now I come back to the RVOT. So now the pigtail catheter. Come go to the same yellow cranial projection. Get ready for an angiogram. 18 ml at 18 rate. So our landing zone was below the second sternal wire. So at this position, what I'm going to do is slightly withdraw. the assembly so at this point let me make an angiography uh, you are ready at 18 at 18 full cranial yeah okay so let us uh, let us uh, review this angiogram in this angiography almost uh, uh, 8, 80% of the valve is beyond the place where uh the it's it's in the main pulmonary artery and just about 10 to 20% of the valve is within the uh, proximal to the landing zone so uh, our our plan will be to uh, uh, like uh, pull the valve a little bit more as we are expanding so we are going to go for an extremely slow inflation so we probably will inflate only the proximal part and the distal part of the balloon and slightly make the valve go a little bit above repeat another rvot angiogram again assess the waist the waist as we see here at this point is just below the second sternal wire it is roughly in the region of the left coronary artery catheter so this left left coronary artery catheter plus the second sternal wire are going to be our tentative landmarks for judging the guide wire position so this is the the tip of the left coronary catheter and the second sternal wire just below that is the landing zone show the previous angiogram so so our our intention will be to come a little bit more proximal however that will be after uh, a little bit of balloon inflation at this point we will also test the rv pacing and see whether rv pacing results in a better quality angiography because there is going to be stasis of the contrast more so pace at 180 pace at 180 and get ready for an rvot angiogram 18 at 18 Okay, now repeat See an what? angiography. Okay, stop the pacing. So uh, here again on a pacing angiogram, we identify that the waist, the the landing zone, is below the tip of the left coronary artery, and it is below the left like second sternal wire, and somewhere between the second and the third sternal wire. What Shiva Kumar. Yes. I think this is a great position there because when you inflate the valve tends to go a little bit lower so I would not come down more than this because you know you're going to inflate it to 32 mm and definitely it would be below the bifurcation and that, what, yeah, what do you let, think let me say my tricky if I do direct implantation of to my valve I start a little more distally inflate because it is open from the distal end you, you, Uh, and you get ready with an injection to the left band screen tv so here you in full only come down if you see the plate this do and then you can you come back little bit and do under -piecing, under -piecing. an injection it is not possible inject. to milking back to the rv because it will flare start at the distal end of the valve okay. so you, you may start very front. slowly slowly then little bit back and then do another angiogram and uh, go up in my opinion. yeah go ahead shiva kumar yeah i agree with uh, you uh, ahmed we are we are going to follow something similar what we are going to do is uh, start pacing now 
we are going to have a minimal minimal inflation uh, 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 like uh, start pacing yeah yeah minimal inflation minimal keep inflating Stop. Hold it. Hold it. Stop. Now, Stop. get ready for an angiography. Stop. Get ready for angiography. Okay, we are still a little above. So, little bit above, yes. Little bit above. So, I am slowly bringing it down. Get ready for a second injection. Okay. Yes. Uh, in Slow, slowly inflate and see. Okay. Okay. Now, keep inflating. Hello. Okay, yeah. go. Yeah, go full. Go full, empty, empty. So this is a volume dependent inflation. So we are trying to empty it, fully empty, fully empty. Okay, deflate, deflate, fully deflate. There is now fluoro store this. There are in the Stop pacing. Inside. So very well. Stop pacing. Just in the middle of two hours. I'll show you very the fluoro well. store, the sequence. Show the fluoro store. Show the fluoro store fully. So, uh, like, uh, so, so the, now I'm going to do a coronary testing. Now, this is the this is the full inflation. Uh, the the entire uh, ML uh, 45 ML. Actually, it is recommended 40 ML. We gave 5 ML extra. 45 ML has been implanted. I will I'll get it hooked uh, the left main uh, catheter. I think no need for extra volume in this particular. You see the indentation on the valve. Uh, you may know that the outer uh, diameter of the 32 millimeter S3 and uh, my valve is more than 32 because of the skirt. At least additional two millimeter. Angiogram ready? Is that 34? 30 ml at 18 rate. 30 ml at 18 rate. Or 20, 23 ml 18. I can, I'm used. No problem. Ready? Okay. So uh, freeze that picture. So if you if you look at it, uh, we have we have caught actually this is not a, a beautiful angiogram because the uh, the RV is diluting the picture. However, we have seen that uh, the the position what we desired is what we have achieved. Completely deflated. Ex excellent position. Yeah. So now at this point, what I'm going to do is give a slack on the wire. Give a small slack on the wire. So that it moves away from the valve. Oh, very good. I'm coming very slowly. Come back to AP position, Any, please. If Sorry, anybody in the audience has questions, we have two mic three microphones. They are distributed there. May, you have a question? Go ahead. Good morning, Shiva. Uh, it's May from Egypt, and congratulations on a very good case. My question was uh, not using the dry seal because we too have a problem getting it in our country. So how easy it is to track and how, um, I mean, have you encountered any problems with the tricuspid valve? And I think Dr. Shelby also says... Uh, you don't use the um, dry seed. So yeah. is it, um, the, if, you, if you use um, a self-expanding valve uh, or yeah, a balloon yeah, expanding, are there any problems there? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. My, I, I share sure. with you, most of the most of the countries like uh, Turkey or uh, uh, yeah, Egypt or ours, all are having more or less the similar problem of non-availability yeah. of a yeah, large 26 bore sheet. Currently, the 26 bore sheets that we have uh, a, a few in our country are the Metronic Centrant. Uh, the second option for us is uh, when we are using the Venus P valve, the Venus has got a Vite sheet, which is, uh, which is also a 26 French sheet. And uh, then we have the Python XL sheet, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, can you go back to that epicranial projection? Uh, Python XL sheet, which is uh, again, yeah, uh, braided 26 uh, French sheet. Um, uh, however, in majority of the patients, uh, we uh, try to take it directly. 
I will I will uh, uh, briefly tell you the the way in which yeah um, uh, uh, yeah uh, this one is different yeah yeah my valve is different from a sapien. Uh, yeah. I will I, the sapien uh, the my valve has got Let's a see. proximal portion of the balloon and a distal portion of the balloon, and if you okay. look at the inside of the balloon, there is a conical one rigid hub. This conical rigid hub increases the profile of the proximal and the distal part of the balloon and between the two conical hubs there is a waste and in that waste the valve is crimped so okay. the valve does not the valves nickel cobalt metal ridges do not protrude outside this conical part of this balloon so the smoother part of the balloon goes through the tricuspid valve and the the my valve which is the nickel cobalt alloy is protected inside because it is smaller in profile than the conical upper part and the lower part so the chances of having a significant tricuspid valve trauma as we are advancing through the tricuspid valve is to some extent avoided in this in this valve uh, uh, the long sheets we use it if we fail to achieve if we fail to achieve yeah yeah proper uh, um, uh, valve position on our conventional method so at this position i want to show the rv and pa pressure pressure traces so i'm i am now going for uh, thank you yeah. shiva congratulations again yeah my yeah i can make shiva come on you have about 5 minutes to show us the angiogram yeah, yeah. I, will, we'll I will show you first the hemodynamics show it in 50 scales both in 50 scales. Question there. Uh, so, regarding the make it coronary, a big screen. Regarding coronary artery compression test, especially if you are expecting from CT, there is abnormal course of the coronary system. I maybe it is too early to skip this. Uh, this Go to your caudal projection. Especially, I mean now, uh, I mean still we we have different size of the valves and different uh, model of the valves. So what is the best to test? Is it to do like an aortic root angiogram Hello. or to do selective uh, Hello. coronary angiogram, especially if you are expecting very close proximity of the coronary artery to the artery? Good question. So, Shiva Kumar, you heard the question about coronary compression test. Yes. Which is better to do, selective coronary angiography or aortic root angiography? I always do selective coronary angiography. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting, uh, while I was hearing that question, I was getting into the caudal projection to see uh, an on uh, uh, view of the uh, I'll, I, we always do a selective and coronary angiography aortic root or uh, selective so this is uh, this is now uh, you, a coronary you, angiography yeah. now show selective the hemodynamic angiography is the best i think so this is the hemodynamic uh, uh, result uh, we we can see that there is a good amount of diastolic uh, uh, hold up of the uh, diastolic hold up of the pressures you can you can see the pressure tracing yes yeah so now i'm going for an uh, uh, pulmonary artery angiography uh, so go to the same ap cranial projection ap cranial projection yellow cranial so now uh, get on to main screen uh, fluoroscopy So I'm planning to make one, one injection through this marker pigtail. Uh, go further, crane, uh, okay. R reduce the LMO. Let us see the valve in its, yeah, keep reducing. Reducing further. Yeah, keep reducing further. Enough, enough. Okay, ready for injection. Very nice, uh, Shiva Kumar. Very yeah. nice result. Yeah, make a measurement quickly of the, make a measurement of the valve, uh, the, uh, the 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 diameter with the marker pigtail. I'll just show the the diameter. We in fact uh, we gave a 32 millimeter and we gave 5 ml extra. So it will be. I, I in fact I heard Dr. Ahmed uh, also mentioning that since the balloon testing was uh, 30 millimeter was occlusive. It may be acceptable even to go to uh, 30 millimeter and 32 itself. Uh, however, we just will see how much we have gained by that additional 5 ml. Yeah. 
So uh, we, we, we. So this is 31 millimeter. 31 millimeter, correct. So uh, that's th perfect. That, that is which is 32 on the top. So so basic uh, 34 at the distal. So basically, what we see is even though we give a, a, an inflation, there probably will be some amount of si tiny recoil of the whole assembly. And also the distal right ventricular outflow tract might press the valve a little bit, so uh, so it is uh, we the the we get a comfort by inflating a little larger than the recommended balloon size. So we we have here seen that instead of 40 ml we have inflated 5 ml extra, and probably we achieved uh, just a a contact of the valve with the entire outflow tract in a very stable position. Uh, do you want another Wait. RVOT angiogram again? No, I, I think you, you have demonstrated uh, the valve position, the function, no PR. I think the result uh, is excellent and we congratulate you on this. So we're going to leave you now unless if there is a last minute question. Ahmed, do you want to say one word about the uh, use of the coronary angiography, aortic root or selective? Quickly. Yeah, usually for saving time, aortic root. If there is any suspicion, uh, go but and select. Likewise, I do aortic root. If there is any suspicion, and then I go with selected. Shiva Kumar, well done. We'll see you for your second case. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.